Hello guys. Have a good day. Hope you had your lunch. So today my topic is headless CMS with using Gatsby. First of all, introduction about me. My name is Navdeep Singh. Currently I am working as a front-end developer for Falcon Agency, which is situated at Singapore. I'm work I'm working remotely for them. And I have over 12 years of work experience in website development. So you can take me as a senior, like uh, I started as a PHP developer. So going through the, my career, uh, I, you know, there's a front-end development, full-stack development, the coin term, and all the things uh, like uh, Jamstack and React.js JS things. So to uh, take the pace on, I have also learned on my own pace. Uh, I'm a self-learner. So you, you can say from last 10 years, I'm working from home. So this is my only window to contact, uh, connect with you. And uh, I'm also Google certified mobile as specialist. And in last year, I was selected by Google India to attend Google IO developer meet at San Francisco. And uh, I'm passionate about web performance, accessibility, ethics, and modern technologies. Yes, modern technologies. That's uh, Jamstack and Gatsby things. It's also included in the modern technology. So what's the agenda for today? Our agenda, agenda is first, what is headless CMS? We will cover three types of CMSs. How client requests processed, server-side rendering, pre-rendering, pros and cons, and I will share the resources, how you can start on that. Okay, uh, first of all, I want to tell you that so this is the right topic, I think, so who are joining us on all live already. There's uh, recently uh, my uh, co-host uh, Kapil shared the topic about the Jamstack, which is correlated with this topic, that's the uh, uh, headless CMS. Because in Jamstack, we you know uh, uh, website well based on the JavaScript API and Markdown. But here, instead of Markdown, we are using the CMS. Yes. Uh, okay. So you know that's uh, CMS. You know, I don't know because uh, many of the you guys, um, maybe junior developers, uh, only work on the SPA single page application. So CMS is, is all traditional companies or traditional uh, non-developers or clients use to manage their website uh, which, uh, without the help of developer. So the, we developed some content management system. So without the help of developer, yeah, they can update their content. So uh, the CMS without head, Without head means uh, the head is the front uh, front end, and body means so. Literally, we will uh, take it down. The yes, body is the back end, and head is the front end. So we separated the body and the front end. So head is the front end. Uh, any CMS without head is the headless CMS. Okay, so uh, today we will uh, use the CMS as a WordPress. I will take it as an example. We can use the any uh, example like Magento, any CMS can be used, but here uh, I will take the example of WordPress. Because in my company, uh, they, they prefer uh, WordPress. Many clients prefer WordPress. So I have to develop in the WordPress. So why it is uh, chosen as a WordPress CMS? Because 59.4, 4% of all websites using a known content management system are using WordPress. So this is a well-known and well-popular, so that's why. So you, you will say that, uh, why we, we are not a traditional person. Uh, we are the, the super uh, cool person, <laughs> sorry to say that, but you see that. Uh, because uh, in the CMS, it is a traditional way. Many guys uh, who uh, recently I uh, attended the talks who hated the PHP developers, but that's the, not the same. Uh, now the, the technology is very changed. Uh, WordPress uh, provides us the uh, API because you know that in the Jamstack, API is important. So WordPress gives us API by default, yes. 
you can see or search any uh, on the Google that's uh, any websites who uses the WordPress. First of all, I take an example of the Sony Music. They are using the WordPress as the CMS. And their website, uh, that, that's the traditional way, that's all not developed on the uh, Gatsby. That's the traditional CMS uh, WordPress. And uh, this is the example I will say you. There's a, uh, check it out any website, and this is the URL slash w hyphen JSON. You will get the uh, JSON of the all content, and that can be used as an API. I can give you the example. Okay, if we uh, open this link. See, uh, it gives us the JSON of all the website. So using this uh, JSON, we can de develop any website, uh, which is modern, like using the Jamstack or Gatsby. So three types of CMS we usually work on. The traditional way is the monolithic CMS. In that CMS, uh, we have a database, backend, and frontend. This is called uh, coupled with each other. So uh, in layman, I will say that in one domain, uh, all uh, WordPress CMS is in, uh, enabled, integrated on that, and the frontend uh, is used from the uh, as a theme of the WordPress. So this is the monolithic CMS. This is a traditional way to display the content. And another way, which is uh, come into the uh, in the picture, there's a decoupled CMS. In this CMS, the backend is the same. The uh, WordPress or anything, it uh, backend communicates with the database, and the change comes here in front end presentation layer. Like or we can use the React.js, Vue.js, anything with the use of API, uh, we can communicate with the backend. So uh, this is the decoupled CMS. In this case, also the uh, sorry. In this case, also the domain is the same. Uh, like uh, uh, WordPress CMS integrated on the one server, and on the same server we can. Uh, 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 deploy the React.js website. And uh, with the use of the API, we can uh, communicate with the database and get the result. This is another type decoupled CMS. And latest one is the headless CMS. You can understand I'm working as a front-end developer and uh, as a traditional uh, use this uh, uh, latest technology because they, they were uh, very, I'm audible? Yeah, you are yes. audible. Yes. All right, all right. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, so the, I was talking about that uh, it is very hard to convince them because in, uh, in my in your company also, it may be hard to convince them that uh, we are using the traditional way to develop the CMS and why use this? So what's first benefit you can tell them uh, that is a, a speed, the performance. It, it will it give, uh, you can uh, run the uh, lighthouse in the Chrome and give the results to them. I, same like that, I convinced my colleagues that it is the best way to develop the website. Uh, uh, Navadeep, uh, you are still showing the JSON data. Uh, do you want to switch to the slides? Okay, okay, okay. I think so. Thanks, okay. thanks for telling me. Yeah. Okay, we were there. I think so. I already explained, but uh, I didn't share the screen. Okay. Uh, I think so. I explained about the monolithic CMS, decoupled CMS, and headless CMS. I give you a quick overview again because the screen was not shared. Uh, monolithic CMS is again the traditional way of uh, developing the website. Uh, like WordPress, uh, Magento, Joomla, and uh, decoupled CMS is the same. Uh, it is the uh, backend uh, the same, but in the front end we can use the React.js, Vue.js. Yeah, 
uh, with the uh, usage of API, uh, front end can communicate with the back end. This is the decoupled CMS. This is also the way to develop the website. All ways are good actually. So latest one is the headless CMS that's uh, recently I explained about that I can miss my uh, company why to use that. I will show in later slides why it is important and uh, why it makes the difference. Okay, so next one I will tell you about how client request processed. Yes, uh, so we have our two different ways uh, that client request processed is first is server side rendering and sec uh, second is pre rendering. Okay, in server side rendering, I will uh, want to tell you that this is uh, the diagram. You can see it is a uh, more presentation and you can understand from it. User sends a request to the CMS, WordPress for example, and WordPress communicates to the database and it sends results to the user. So it's the traditional way, it's the one-to-one uh, -one way user sends a request and get the response, that's it. So this is the example of monolithic CMS. Another example is uh, server server rendering of is that uh, the WordPress CMS is already deployed on your server, right? So, and on another subdomain or another folder, you set up the, your uh, website as a front end, like, uh, recently, we developed in React.js, uh, Vue.js, any any of your choice you can develop it. And with the use of API call, API is the important. We know that and we understand well is that I already explained to you that WordPress uh, provides us the uh, API, REST API link. And with the use of uh, this API, we can create the websites. As uh, already Kapil told that the CMS uh, and the CRM are not good, uh, not good fit for the Jamstacks. So uh, I will again uh, tell you about that. That's my hard problem. That's, he is very right on that. And uh, I, I, ha I had uh, struggled to uh, compel my companions to work on that. And uh, I accomplished a, a website which is a, a CMS based and uh, it will be used at a CRM also. And uh, I developed on the Gatsby. So this is an example of decoupled CMS. Another, that's the all star of the topic is the headless CMS. This is the pre-rendering. Pre-rendering is the latest. I am love it, love of it really. So I think this is the latest feature for, for the website development and that I seen from the last decade that uh, how the website development processes has changed. So you can see in this diagram, it's also very explanatory. User sends the request and it gets the uh, pre-rendered HTML, CSS and GSS which is very uh, minimal CSS, which is required to uh, display the content of the website. On, on another end here, you can see that this is a WordPress CMS, which is the only already deployed on the server. And uh, it communicates with the Gatsby. Gatsby is a static site generator. We are on the Gatsby. Why we are using the Gatsby? We have a uh, multiple options because uh, you know, uh, the popular thing we uh, we chose that. So I uh, I'm very much uh, impressed with the Gatsby. So I chose the Gatsby as a static site generator. And what it does that it generates the some pre-rendered files which is used by the user. So you can see that it can't uh, it can't directly communicate with the WordPress CMS. That's the key of the thing. It can't be directly communicated with the WordPress. It, uh, this is another diagram, which is in detail. You can see that, uh, okay, I can I start from here again. So, so this is the example, and this is the uh, WordPress CMS deployed on the server. And uh, 
this is the gatsby this is the mediator gatsby is the mediator and we have to deploy it on somewhere we have deployed this uh, this code and uh, i deployed this code in on the netlify because netlify it's uh, it is used for the continuous integration and continuous deployment so here again i am uh, going to explain it how uh, wordpress and gatsby communicates with them it communicates using the graphql queries you know this uh, many things are changing because uh, uh, recently we used the rest api and uh, how the gatsby communicates with the wordpress wordpress communicates with the wordpress using the graphql queries and uh, uh, it's uh, when uh, any suppose or oh, let's again uh, give you an example here let's stop uh, step by step we deploy the server with the wordpress cms another thing another code which is uh, gatsby code is deployed on the netlify and when netlify re-render re-render uh, on the build time it re-render all the code and generate say html files css files which is used by the user so this is the gatsby generator which generates so suppose user sends a request to get the uh, display any uh, home page it gets up uh, files from here pre render files and it uh, displays here so you can say uh, on the wordpress cms if uh, any uh, content update comes like uh, you, uh, admin goes there and content a uh, image or any uh, text file update on that and in that process like it sends the request to the gatsby like any change like any text or image change any type of change it sends a request to gatsby and netlify re render all the files like uh, it fetches the it regenerates the schema uh, using the graphql queries and it generates the schema and, and um, all files which is required uh, for the user then it uh, generates again the fi pre rendered files here so this is the key thing i think so it is clear to you how it works so there are two key terms are, are here which are uh, come into existence here runtime and build time yes so runtime is related to the browser it is not related to the uh, how the code is processed this is not the thing uh, it, this is uh, this is the thing uh, runtime is related to the browser like when any request comes uh, user sends uh, request to the server and uh, how a browser returns it uh, with uh, with the response time it is the browser runtime and build time is the how the server like uh, on the netlify we uh, use the term build time and uh, on the netlify uh, how, how much time it takes to rebuild or regenerate all the files for the user it is the build time so now this uh, what are the pros and cons of ssr server side rendering the pros are directly there is no intermediary between client and server it is directly no uh, no one in uh, come in between is client and server that's it and it's a traditional way of sending requests and getting the response which is straightforward thing no uh, any drama uh, this is a straightforward uh, forward thing the biggest cause is that because in we are uh, in this 2020 and uh, we are leading to 225 and uh, this uh, the saving time and performance is the biggest issue so which is uh, um, decreased by this gatsby or any uh, server side generators files so um, another cause is there uh, the unwanted files or library download Results the large load time. 
it decreases the load time. So this is a main cause of the server side rendering. So for the pros and cons of pre-rendering, first, minimal HTML CSS JS files are deployed resulted fastest load time. So this is the main uh, our win. And it is also SEO also supported on that. And uh, another is don't depend on web server because uh, it uh, we don't have to care. It is the PHP server, Linux server, what type of server we just deploy uh, because uh, the end user just getting the result from the minimal CSS and JSS, uh, JSS and HTML files. So it depend it don't depend on the web server. So another example, another uh, pros is also SSL free because uh, uh, you know that uh, Google uh, uh, gives the more uh, importance to the websites and uh, crawling, uh, which are SSL based, like the, it is secured sites. And uh, so uh, uh, with the help of Let's Encrypt, it gives the uh, SSL you free. Another, the cons is biggest cons of this pre rendering, which uh, Kapil already told you. Uh, the, for the glorifying CMSs and CRM, it is not good for them. Yeah. Uh, so, little bit uh, definition is changed. For the complex plugins used in the WordPress or any CMS, uh, for example, your website which you're using the complex things. I uh, recently I created the website uh, that was actually uh, complicated that's using the uh, various plugins but, uh, because when you come into the work and you find uh, many options on that so I go through that so it, I will say that it is possible so this term is not uh, so much correct but uh, you can create the website uh, WordPress site uh, using the uh, this headless CMS is very much easy and you can uh, go through it. No one can uh, help it you, you can go through it. So uh, these are the resources and recently uh, uh, I created two website. Uh, one is the my uh, client side uh, company's website and another is the my own website. So headless, for the headless CMS, we have many options. You can say, uh, I, I don't want to get the, uh, or any other CMS. There's a many CMS you can use that. You can see that example. And for my website on, uh, that's based on the Jamstack and uh, I use the uh, Netlify CMS is the overview of this website. It is recently based on the Netlify CMS. And uh, I can give you, go through it some, so you get the overview, how it is, how it is going to work. So this is the uh, Netlify server. You can see that. And uh, this is a Netlify CMS. I use that. We can create that. Uh, this is the demo. This is in demo. I can show you uh, how the process is going on in backend. Take an example. And I will publish it. This is the on the Netlify, Netlify CMS. Let it be published. Okay. Now we will go to the Netlify here. You see the build process is started. This is the build time. And we will go through it. It, uh, as I explained in earlier uh, slides, 
whenever any request comes to uh, to the uh, server it regenerates or recompile all the files so here it is notified taking the example that uh, it's uh, checking that our new content is content and we trigger to update or rebuild all the files it got, uh, notify uh, helps you with this easily you just need to uh, connect your uh, github repo with that and it's go through it another you also uh, i'm also facing this challenge also that uh, sometimes your company not uh, want to uh, devote uh, or invest in the netlify or any other uh, third party servers so you have to uh, use ci and cd on your or github action actions on your own so it uh, triggers if any uh, update comes on the website and it regenerates on its own you can uh, uh, create this example on your own also without the use of netlify so you see that uh, what is going it is uh, regenerating all files building schema creating page all things is generated from uh, again if any uh, request comes it takes hardly 2 or 3 months uh, sorry 2 or 3 uh, minutes so it is almost completed site is live okay uh, we go to the website and blog and i will refresh it blog okay here we go my talk so you see this is the build process this is the way how it goes uh these are options so you can go through it to start on that and uh, any question you can ask me if you uh, get trouble on to start on that i will surely help on that and uh, hope you like that this and i will show you thank you guys